demons of all ages, welcome to another installment of How To with M2. The subject matter for this video will be making fenders for a utility trailer. And if that subject sounds a little out of the ordinary, well, it is. I have been recently putting together a utility trailer, ground up, and I needed fenders and came up with an interesting idea. Recently, my girlfriend had gone to Walmart and bought a set of tires and was having a very bad experience. She even signed on for the extended service plan, which I tried to explain was a little like going to a New Orleans prostitute because you're afraid of getting herpes. Now, to make a short story real long, it occurred to me, as I was discussing the anatomy of a tire, that a tire would make an excellent fender for my utility trailer. And most certainly, you would never have a problem finding a good old used tire. Well, we were having a very rare rainy day in Southern Arizona, which was actually a bit of a blessing because cutting through a tire is not only difficult, but gets the rubber very hot. Hot enough to vulcanize the rubber. And of course, logic would dictate we don't want a mishap just trying to save a couple of bucks on utility trailer fenders. Let's first touch on what makes a tire, even an old used tire, so tough. Tires incorporate many steel strands, very tightly woven. But what makes them especially tough is the fact that these steel reinforced belts are layered. And even beyond that, you may recall a little thing in your basic chemistry days called lattice energy. And the way the steel strands are laid out in a tire to form the belts is highly similar. I wasn't aware a tire had a carcass. Well, you learn something every day. All those carcasses and all that vulcanized rubber. Here's a look at the trailer I've been putting together. And we'll look at both the wheels and this is where I want to place the fenders. I've been painting a kind of Arizona flag motif on the sides. And it's coming along nicely. And of course, Red Skeleton is very pleased. First, I wanted to make sure I got all the crud out of the tire. Then I wanted to make sure that the tire was safely mounted so that it would hold steady as I was cutting it. Nine inch Diablo with saw teeth or thick metal. However, I immediately noticed that the vibration of the tire was not allowing me to get a good cut. You'll notice me trying to cut through the bead of the tire which is almost all steel. And the sawzall was ineffective at cutting through. So plan B is implemented. I've got some sandbags up on top to cut down on the vibration. And I placed some 10 pound weights on the interior of the tire to also hold it steady and cut down on that vibration to allow me to cut well. I'm going to use an angle grinder and protective eyewear. Please, if you attempt this, make sure you're wearing protective eyewear. You do not want this to happen, which I keep as a warning in my shop. I can tell you, I like to think I'm highly safety conscious. However, I don't wear protective eyewear enough. However, if you're using an angle grinder with a tire, you are going to need protective eyewear. And here is a standard cutting blade on a small angle grinder. 
and I'm going to attempt to cut through the bead of the tire first. I do not believe that the sidewall of the tire will be that difficult. Once again, I'm happy it's raining because things are heating up. You can see how tough a tire really is. This was not an easy job to cut through the bead of this tire. But with a little patience and persistence, I was able to get through the bead and was able to cut right through the sidewall of the tire. I then became concerned that the actual steel belt, the plies of the tire itself, would be a problem. However, that was much easier than the single bead of the tire. So I was able to make good progress from here out. Getting a little impatient, I went back to the sawzall and by pulling the tire apart slightly to back off the resistance, I was able to make great progress in cutting through the tire. You'll see as I hit the bead, I run into another problem and get out the angle grinder once again. Once again, you can really see how tough that bead of that tire is. But finally success, I get through the tire, and now I want to take an accurate measurement to make sure that my fenders are going to adequately cover the wheels on the trailer. Just a quick measurement to make sure I'm on target. I know the wheel diameter with tire on the trailer is about two and a half feet. So what I want to do is swing an arc to make sure that I'm going to have two equal sizes, which is a little less than half of the tire itself. It would have been nice if I could have just cut the tire in half. Unfortunately, I'm not able to, and my measurements indicate I have to take out about 20%, well, maybe about 15% of the tire, and then I'll be right on. I score the tire quickly to mark my point, and then I'm ready to cut again. I'm starting to grow tired of this tire getting the best of me, so this calls for the anvil. This tire is not going to budge with this anvil on top of it. So, it did work like a charm. Cut the vibration to a minimum, and my next two cuts probably took about half the time as the first one. So, you live and learn. Notice how steady that tire is with that big anvil on it, and I can tell you that really helped a lot. I was able to cut right through at this point. I could say at this point, I was thinking cutting a tire is probably about 10 times as hard as I originally had anticipated. Tires are extremely tough, and the beads of the tire are extremely strong. Well, 
success. One more little cut, and then we'll have two symmetrical fenders by Uniroyal. Again, not to belabor the point, but you can really see just how tough the bead of a tire really is. And voila! Success! <laughs> to finalize the project, let me briefly show you in still pictures how I mounted the new fenders. Okay, I have fender washers, plenty of fender washers and quarter inch bolts with nuts. First, I had to prop up the fender itself to hold it in place. Then I simply took a drill from the inside and drilled out. One of the tires I wanted to stretch out a little bit, so I took a scissor jack and I just simply spread the tire apart so it would be wide enough. You'll see later that I actually put a prop inside the fender to keep it apart enough for it to fit over the trailer tire properly. And here I'm using a regular drill and putting in the quarter inch bolts with nuts from the inside out. And then later, I'm taking the angle grinder and reduce the size of the bolt so that there's no leftover bolt that might potentially rub up against the wheel itself, causing a problem. Here you see my Arizona flag design, which was simple, and I think it adds a nice touch to the utility trailer. Here you can see the fender in place after it's been mounted. Um, if you look quickly, you can see it's propped a little bit apart. I have just a simple dowel inside keeping it apart. If it trains the rubber to stay apart nicely, I can remove it or just leave it in place. It's out of the way of the wheel, so the wheel will not rub up against it. I'm pleased with the outcome, and I'm especially pleased that you tuned in to see another installment of How To With M2. Please be sure to subscribe, and if you have any comments, I would love to hear them. Be well.